Covina, California, 1963. In this small farming town on the outskirts of Los Angeles, 17-year-old Linda Porter awakens to find herself aboard a strange craft. From what she is able to recall later under hypnosis, a small creature that appeared to be a gray alien led her towards a light-filled room where she encountered another type of being, one much taller and with the features of a praying mantis. Very standalone, very odd case. The fact that this occurred in 1963 is very intriguing because it's before the abduction phenomenon became popularized. There have been depictions throughout various abduction scenarios that include the gray aliens and this larger, tall insectoid being, very praying mantis-like. Linda Porter claims that throughout her teens and 20s, she experienced numerous other encounters with these alien beings. But it wasn't until the age of 45 that she finally reached out to investigative journalist Linda Moulton Howe to tell her story. I received a letter carefully written from Linda Porter. This led up to her sending me a whole lot of drawings. These drawings appear in Linda Moulton Howe's book, Glimpses of Other Realities. One of the drawings was of a praying mantis about eight feet tall in a room that was very odd, had a cylindrical object and sparkles of light. There have been quite a number of different types of aliens seen, allegedly by contactees. But the ones that are really peculiar and very rare are these very scary, skinny, large, basically intelligent insects that have been reported. People have drawn parallels between the aliens that are reported on board UFOs and insects, particularly bees. The greys, for instance, could be equated in some way to the drone or the worker bee. The so-called praying mantis type could be seen perhaps as the queen bee. Larger than the others, more intelligent, they're taller than a person, eight or even nine feet tall. And the gray aliens may handle the person who's being abducted, but in the background, there's this praying mantis type that seems to be calling the shots. According to Porter, she is part of a larger experiment, one in which these aliens appear concerned with her soul. She said, whatever we humans are, we have an animus, a soul, that is mysterious to them. And they are trying to find out where does the soul spirit go at the moment of death? And that the non-humans we're studying the recycling of the souls in and out of containers. She talked about being shown three cylinders. Contained in each cylinder was a human being in kind of like a state of suspended animation. Linda Porter came away from her two or three decades of interaction with these non-humans, including the at first terrifying praying mantis, that these are extraterrestrial biological entities that have taken a deep interest in the evolution of life forms here, that they have manipulated DNA in already evolving primates, that they have created a whole series of different models. Might the numerous accounts of mantis-like beings reported by alleged alien abduction victims, along with the ancient San story of a praying mantis god, be evidence that an otherworldly race of insectoids really does exist.